Okay. Day six of my 30 day world or system. In this case, we're talking my futuristic setting, uh, world setting for uh, Stellar Frontiers, the game system that I, I spent a better part of a decade working on, have a contract with Golden Games to see produced, and am patiently or impatiently waiting for somebody from that company to remember we signed a contract. Still have another eight or nine months to go before their 16 month or so window is up, but we shall see. How are taxes in such and such collected in your world? Now, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to read that second word. It was a bit blurred, so, but it makes sense to me how, how are taxes collected. Well, everybody gets a piece of the pie. This is basically the, 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 con the, this, the base foundation for economics in the Stellar Frontiers, in settled space. In settled space, the house lord needs to generate credits to purchase materials, resources, to hire technicians, to hire specialists, to hire uh, um, mercenaries, to build ships, to build fleets, to build more builds, to increase their colony sizes, so on and so forth. So they create a tax-based system. And actually, in actuality, the lion's share of economics is made off of the exchange and purchase of selling of raw and manufacturing materials and trade. You're going to get 10 times or 100 times more credits out of trade than you are by taxing your population. Now, some of the base rules for taxing is I can have port taxes, or so every ship that shows up at my port needs to pay uh, half a credit per 100 ton or something like that. Uh, if I, I also allow, the game mechanics allow for a, a population tax, a world tax. In this case, uh, a percent of a percent of a percent of the gross, the gross national product, so to speak, for a given planet is based off of population. So if I have uh, a thousand people, uh, I might get a credit worth of taxes out of them. Now it seems low, but it's not. It's not when you consider all the other things that they're that they're doing. Now the economic system is based off of a a one was it one for four, one for three or something to that effect. Uh, when I talk about the civilian side of the exchange of a given planetary exchange, the house lords only allow the tap into the house side of a given exchange. So if I have a corporate entity, a platinum or a guild or whatever, uh, running a number of factories on my planet, they are going to produce, let's say, four tons of steel in a given cycle. And the house lords t a tax on that is one ton. So the house gets one ton of steel from this factory every cycle without cost. And it means there's an additional three tons of steel being sold on the civilian side of the market. The civilian's three tons is what's being purchased by these other platinums and other manufacturing entities to produce more builds and production materials and so on and so forth. Those are not available to the house. Those are available for platinums. The house's take is now got is, a, is the material that the house lord allowed to allot to building projects that the house is pursuing or to sell outright. So if I accumulate 100 tons of steel in my exchange and I have an open market exchange for the planet because it's that type of planet, then a ship merchant comes through and he rolls purchase, one of the items he purchases when you roll, when you roll up for it is steel. He's going to purchase the steel supply that's in the open exchange at the going rate. So the going rate might be 67 cents, 0.67 credits on the ton. So in this case, I'm gonna sell 100 tons of steel for 67 credits. This is where the house lord pockets additional credits. So where the value here is, obviously if I keep my stockpiles slim, the lower they are, the higher, the more they're worth because the demand's higher. And in this case, I, I warehouse the balance. So if I choose to keep the minimum 50 tons uh, available, so I or tw uh, 25 tons available, so I can get that higher pay rate, 75 cents a ton, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to warehouse the rest now. How would I make money off the rest? Well, if I'm not using it, if it's a surplus material and I'm not using it in construction projects and builds and things, I can then where I can load it up on a freighter. I can either contract to a third party freighter to take it for me, or I can use a house freighter and save money. 
and take it to a trade world, for example, once I've located one, and potentially sell it there for three or, or two to four credits a ton. So if I say, took 100 tons, I could potentially make 67 credits if I sold it to a local merchant, or I can ship it off to a trade world that's 30 years, 30 light years away, and it might take my ship eight cycles to get there, and cost me five credits worth of fuel and, and supplies to get my crew there, and then turn around and make 400 credits off that 100 tons. That's the big way to make credits for the house. And of course, I've heard people, oh, I'm just gonna make credits hand over fist. They don't take into account is I'm gonna need, my house needs starfighters and war knights and weapons for my soldiers. I need manufacturing materials. I need, maybe I need a, you know, 300 tons of electronics to complete that research facility I wanna build. Well, at that point, I'm going to turn around and buy the electronics from the manufacturer from the trade world. Perhaps I'm going to get them for four cents on the dollar. So I could get a hundred there for three credits and ship it home. Problem then lies is how much shipping capacity did my freighter have? If it's got a thousand ton capacity, well I can get that three hundred credit those three hundred tons of electronics real easily by it for nine credits. So nine credits out of four hundred credits, it's a drop in a bucket. But then I want to buy 12 starfighters so I can outfit a, a, a squadron and I want them to be heavy fighters and those fighters cost 25 credits a piece. Now you see where the value or where your money starts to go. So how do we get our taxes? Now it's assumed that each step of the way above the house the Imperium gets a piece of it too and it's not accounted for in the house lord's uh, initial system because the house the house imperium the imperium gets their taxes not from straight from the house lords but from that material that's been shipped so that trade world is going to give a cut to the imperium so of that 100 tons of steel you just sold to the to the trade world 25 tons of it is opted over to the Imperium. The Imperium is going to then either ac accumulate it and utilize it for its own pro its own projects, its own manufacturing and other necessary needs, or it's going to turn it around and resell it to somebody else and use that money for finances. That's the base system for economics uh, for Stellar Frontiers. So there you have it. Thank you for watching.